G'day there guys, Marky here, and welcome back to another episode of r slash relationship advice. I do hope you enjoyed today's episode, and with that said, I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn to the barbie, let's get right into it. Posted by user Tweed Fox, titled, My boyfriend, 29 male, told me, 27 female, that there was a chance he'd leave me if I was infertile. I was really sick from ages 22 to 24 with my lungs, and I almost died. The doctors to this day still can't tell me what caused it, and I recovered, but still have minor breathing issues from time to time. My boyfriend and I have been together for one and a half years, and recently have been talking more about children in our future. We unfortunately never spoke about things like infertility, which sadly runs in my family. I was quite taken aback when he said there was a chance he'd leave our relationship if I couldn't safely carry a child because of my lungs, which are currently being reinvestigated, or I was infertile. When I asked him if he was the infertile one, he said he expected me to do the same, but it's something I'd personally never consider leaving him over. We revisited the conversation the next day, and he went from saying there was a chance, to him stating that he's 95% sure that he wouldn't leave me. I, of course, would never stand in his way of being a father, but I can't seem to shake off the fact that there's this condition attached to our relationship now. It's made me feel like my value is attached to my fertility, and I'm starting to view him in a different light. Am I just being oversensitive? Edit, I just wanted to note that I'm not actually confirmed to be infertile. I'm just at a slight risk because I've had a few women in my family that have had infertility issues, and there's also the concern that I wouldn't be able to safely carry a baby due to my lungs. We would obviously have to run tests to have anything confirmed. Honestly, I can understand if it is a deal breaker for you in this situation, because for a lot of people it would be. This sickness with your lungs only concluded around five years ago. You guys have been together for one and a half years, so logically, you guys met three and a half years after this incident. I'm not sure how to read into his words in this situation because I'm very aware of the fact that a lot of people say, when someone shows you their true self, believe them. And this backtracking when you revisited the conversation with him saying he's 95% sure he wouldn't leave you kind of just seems like, he realized what he said was messed up, that maybe he still believes it, but he shouldn't have let the cat out of the bag, and now there's only a 5% chance instead of a 100% chance of him leaving and expecting you to leave him if the reverse was to happen. There is a condition on your relationship, and a lot of people won't be cool with that, but a lot of people will. I'm not entirely sure. But I do feel as though you're not being overly sensitive because that's such a spanner to throw in the works. In the comments, SoCalThrowaway7 says, Having biological children together is a very, very common deal breaker for people. It doesn't mean anything about your value though, just your compatibility with him. There are plenty of people who will never want kids or who are just fine adopting, etc. Your value isn't decided by one man's desire to be in a relationship with you long term. Too many people tie their value to the opinion of the person they really like, which just makes no sense when you think about it objectively. It's one of those societal pieces of bullshit that gets pushed on young women especially, that their relationships and marketability in the dating pool are a big part of their value. It's a crock though. Is someone who chooses to be single and childless and uses their time and disposable income to help others less valuable than a mother of three who has an F you got mine mentality? What does valuable even mean? You might lose this relationship, and that'll suck and feel emotionally devastating, but you'll only lose it due to a fundamental compatibility, not because something is wrong with you. OP replies, I cannot express how grateful I am for this comment. This is exactly what I needed to hear. Thank you so much. I'm going to add a different perspective. My husband and I found out I was infertile after we got married. We've had many, many losses, and it's been unbelievably hard. I've always been so afraid that he'll leave because the problem lies with me, but he reassures me that that will never happen and loves me and supports me through our losses. Trying to conceive can be so hard. It is so much harder than I ever expected, and it breaks a lot of couples. Through all of that, I'm so grateful I have my husband though, and I'm so glad that he doesn't just look at me as a baby maker. Please don't be with someone who loves you conditionally, because life is hard enough already. My fiancé has just ended our relationship for this reason. 
He always told me that if it was a medical issue, he would understand, and we'd look at other routes to have kids. When it came to it, he just couldn't be happy without children. All I would say is be careful. If he's told you this now, chances are he will do it. I hope I'm not the rule. I hope you work it out. But unfortunately, from my experience, in the end, wasn't positive. Men love to say how much they can't live without children, but they aren't the ones giving birth. And they usually push most of the child rearing onto the mother anyways. Genuinely straight up terrifying how many men predicate their relationships with women entirely upon whether or not they have access to using her uterus and body with his genetic material. And that's before they expect her to be the default caregiver and labor in raising a child. While I get this is hurtful, I totally get it. I don't want kids at all, and if a guy did, or changed his mind that he did, I would end it. That's not something I could ever take away from someone and not feel tremendous guilt, so best we both go separate ways. Update. Thank you for everyone who commented and messaged me directly on my recent post about my boyfriend saying he'd potentially leave me if I were infertile. We took a week break and came back to discuss what happened. He explained that he didn't mean what he said and he was in shock because our relationship was falling apart but I still feel doubtful when even after 24 hours, he only changed it to being 95% sure he wouldn't leave, and during our recent discussion, he admitted he didn't understand exactly how hurtful it would be for me to hear something like that. After reading everyone's comments, speaking to my friends, family, and therapist, we've ended our relationship. Unfortunately, I've realized that after my boyfriend told me there'd be a possibility he'd leave me if I were infertile, that I'm sadly never going to feel secure in this relationship, knowing that he's told me he is unable to support and stick by me should I face health issues in the future, and it's making me doubt if he can show up for me at all, which, admittedly, he's failed to be there for me already this year during my multiple family deaths and important health appointments. I'm devastated, and the most heartbroken I've ever been, as I really thought we had a loving and caring relationship, and that we would be able to build an amazing life together. But I've realized I'm choosing someone who's never going to choose me, and that I deserve better. In the comments, El Bandita says, Good for you. You would feel very lonely if you decided to stay in the relationship with him. I'd rather be lonely on my own, and on my own terms. Yeah. Being lonely in a relationship is significantly worse than just being alone. Honestly, leaving was the right choice because I believe that the first thing he said was the actual truth. He just started trying to walk it back because he saw that it was something that was going to F up their relationship. I'm glad that she got advice and followed through. Which is itself kind of a mess. She mentioned possible infertility. He said he would dump her for infertility. She got nervous about their relationship and he backpedaled? I don't think he was using his thinking brain, but what's the plan? Assume everything goes great, no infertility, no need to ever have resided this concern. He was stupid to have opened his mouth in the first place. Wait to dump her until infertility arises? Save time all around and just break up. She made the right choice for that one. Dither because living in an imperfect and uncertain world is hard? Mission accomplished. You made the world a little more unpredictably bad. And Badger of Horrors says, I'm infertile. There is a 0% chance I can conceive a child and carry it. If my significant other said that that was a deal breaker, then it just is. Relationship has run its course, even if later they didn't mean it or weren't sure. I would know that they would resent me for a lack of a child because of something out of my control. I have to have a total hysterectomy because of cancer. There was no other way that wouldn't have just been rolling the dice and praying things didn't go badly. All for a theoretical kid that may never exist. Breaking up is painful, but knowing your beloved is angry with something about you that you can't change is worse than any breakup. Yeah, absolutely. I don't feel like there is any reasonable uh, way forward in this situation without breaking up. If he's going to hold these beliefs that he will break up with her over infertility, it's just stupid for him to tell his significant other that, because obviously any sane person will break up with you in that instance. I'm trying to wrap my head around how what he said initially could have been a mistake, because he seemed so convincing in that I'm not sure I can gaslight myself into believing 
what he said in that if you're infertile, I'm breaking up with you. And if I'm infertile, I expect you to do the same for me. That's not a mistake. I don't know how anyone could convince themselves that, oh yeah, I didn't actually mean that. Anyway. Our next post is by user Capable Emergency 5154 titled, Am I the asshole for not telling my boyfriend I own the building we live in? Hi, obviously a throwaway for privacy. Also, I'm new to posting, so I hope I do this correctly. When I was 18, my dad gifted me a house with two stories. I am extremely thankful. We are not upper class, but my dad bought this house for a cheap price a long time ago. It was his grandmother's cousin's house. I know that this was an extreme privilege, and I am forever grateful for this. The layout of this building is like an apartment, but it's a house. So basically, each story has its own separate entry, its own kitchen and bathroom. I live upstairs while I rent out the downstairs. My boyfriend, 25 male, moved in with me about three months ago, and we've been together for six months. I have not asked him for money, neither for utilities, or to pay me any rent. The only thing he contributes to is groceries, that we split 50-50. I've not brought up that I own the building, as it's not something I tell many people. If people ask me, I of course tell them that I own it, but if they just assume that I'm a renter, then they can believe that. The topic of a landlord, the renter downstairs, or the owner of the building has not been something we've talked about. This last Tuesday, the renter came up to tell me that her freezer has stopped working. I answered the door, and my boyfriend heard us talking, I suppose. I went downstairs to take a look, and we came to the conclusion that she would buy a new one, send me the receipt, and I would give her the money. She was very grateful for this solution. When I went upstairs, my boyfriend asked if it could be fixed, I told him no, but she was going to buy a new one and I would pay for it. He looked at me like I was crazy and asked me why the hell I would pay for her freezer. I told him that because I'm her landlord and the freezer was there when she started renting, I would stand for the cost. He just asked me if I was serious, to which I said I was. He began screaming at me, asking him why the hell I would hold this information from him and that I was an evil person. I said I was sorry for not telling him, but I didn't think that it would matter. He said he couldn't believe he was together with someone who was a landlord, that all of us just use people for money, and that the only thing we people care about is money, and would rather have people be homeless than offering affordable rent. The downstairs is one kitchen, one bathroom, and four other rooms. I charge $500 in rent. I understand many people have had trouble with landlords, but I try my best to be a good one. He demanded that I give him 50% of the money that I make from rent, or else I was just as bad as he thought. Was I really the asshole for not telling him? He's not talked to me since Tuesday, and I've tried telling him that I'm truly sorry, but he doesn't answer me at all. I'm going with not the asshole in this situation. This is just scammer tactics 101. You know, like, oh, wow, you have money. I'm going to do anything that I can to get this money off of you. You're literally the scum of the earth and I don't love you anymore. Also, give me 250 bucks every time that they pay you. Just because I'm in the relationship with you. That's really sound logic. I love that. Not the asshole OP. In the comments, Ling Jules says, Let me get this straight. He must not have offered to pay half of the rent, because then it would have come up and you would have told him, right? He's living with you rent-free. Up to now, he thought you were paying the entire rent. On what planet does he deserve half of the tenant's rent money? Please reconsider this relationship. Not the asshole. OP says, No, he did not offer to pay for any of the rent. If he offered, I would have explained to him that I own the building. In hindsight, I should have told him that it was my building that he would be living in with me even if he did ask or not. I think that his outburst really showed how he was. I thought about breaking up with him, but also thought that I was maybe overthinking it. If it comes to that, at least I learned something for future relationships. Yup, this is a huge red flag. He was more than happy to leech off you, not paying rent, not even offering, but the moment he found out that you own the place, suddenly he demands half the money, and he has the cheek to criticize you? And landlords living off of other people's rent is evil, but his solution is for him to get half of that money. So it's evil unless he gets his cut. It's very clear what kind of person he is. 
This is reason 5067 why you don't move in with someone after three months of dating. Landlords are evil, their money is dirty, but also give me 50%? Boy, bye. Not the asshole. Dump him. I know that's a common response on this subreddit, but this dude was happy to exploit you for free lodging, and now that he finds out you've got income he wasn't aware of, he wants half of it just cause, or else you're a big meanie. You do not owe him an apology. You owe him a kick in the rear. OP replies, he sees it as both a way of me proving that I'm not renting as a way to grab money from people, so if money is not what I care about, I should have no trouble giving him half, but also as a way to prove to him that I'm sorry for not telling him earlier that I own the building. Lol, either this isn't real or your boyfriend is a crazy asshole. Why would you want to date and live with someone like that? Not the asshole, but get rid of this guy if he actually exists. OP says, Dumb as it is, it very much is real. Before this, he did not act crazy. Not like this, at least. We've not known each other for that long, and he only moved in because his situation with his last landlord was extremely bad. He was about to renew his lease, but the landlord was going to raise his rent by a lot, so I offered to let him live with me. So I guess some of that extreme reaction is because he has had bad experiences with landlords. Back up to the post, there is an edit, Obligatory edit to add that I certainly did not expect this to blow up the way that it did. I've tried to read as much as I can. Thank you all for your advice and support. I've talked with him, and I will update later tonight when I've had time to process everything that went down and try to write it out as best as I can. For the people who are worried about my safety, I called my dad who was sat outside in his car when I talked with my boyfriend, and I am safe as of right now and hope it'll continue that way. Thanks yet again to everyone. Update. This is going to be extremely rushed, lack details, and maybe not so clear. I apologize for that, and I tried my best writing out everything as clearly with as much detail as I could. Sorry if it feels a bit anticlimactic reading it due to the style of how I wrote, I tried. Before we get on with the update, I just want to give some answers to frequently asked questions and some claims I've seen. Also, I'd like to note that I'm not in the US, neither do I live in a country where English is the first language. 1. Why on earth would I charge $500 in rent for a place with 5 rooms? I don't live in the US, neither is this place in the city. It's a place about 1 hour's drive from the nearest city, 15 minutes to the nearest store. We still are about 3,000 people who live here, but what we have is a preschool, one playground, and school for kids ages 6 to 9, and a church. The cost for other places with the same amount of rooms in this place is about 600 to 700. It can be a bit more if the place is newly renovated, has a nice view, has a garage, etc, etc. Many factors in play. The building that I own doesn't have a garage, is not nearly renovated, except new floors and wallpapers in rooms that we changed. Also, other stuff that you need to change like stoves, bathtub, toilet, etc. But I don't see that as a full-on renovation. So even though the rent is below market rate, I still make enough from it to cover outstanding expenses regarding the house. 2. That this story would be fake. You can bet that I would have loved it if this was something that my mind just came up with, but it's not. I've seen some people claiming it's fake for different reasons, being that if it was real, rent would be higher. But as seen in one, I already explained why. Another reason is that my boyfriend would not hate on landlords and then want to participate in having money from the rent. Does everything to everyone always make sense? No. Did this make sense? Absolutely not. I can't tell you all why he would say that, I'm not him. 3. Why would you move in with someone after 3 months? He had problems with his recent living situation, told me about it, I offered to let him stay with me for as long as he needed and wanted. I did this as a nice gesture, as I didn't want him to be homeless, and he expressed that he would feel like a failure if he moved back in with his parents. On to the update. I read as much as I possibly could, and after thinking about this, also about previous stuff I just brushed off, I decided that I would break up with him. It may seem like an impulsive decision, but after everything I felt that the sooner the better it would be. I texted my dad and explained it to him. I asked him if he would be willing to drive to my place and sit in the driveway when I was going to talk with my boyfriend, and he without hesitation said yes. I thought about what I would tell him and how I would lay it out. 
I was extremely nervous about how it would go, and I'm not gonna lie, I was scared after all the people told me that I should be careful and that he may try to hurt me. When I got home, he was already there. I just greeted him, and he of course said nothing. I texted my dad. My dad got here, and I sat down on the couch beside my boyfriend. He didn't know that my dad was here. I can't recall the exact details of the conversation, as my mind tends to blank out in stressful situations, but I'll try my best to recite it. I said, I think we need to have a talk with each other if this relationship is going to work. He said, so are you ready to apologize? And I said, I'll apologize for not telling you that you lived in my building, which I've apologized for many times already. I will not apologize for not giving you a part of my income. And he says, and why is that such a big deal to you? If you don't rent out for the purpose of taking people's money, you should have no problem giving any of that money away. So I said, I really try to understand how you think. You think I'm in it for the money, and you think that I'm a bad person for renting out the downstairs complex, but yet you want money from it. Don't you understand that it seems like you're just in it for the money? I rent out the downstairs for 500. If you really believe all landlords are money grabbers and not good people, would you like me to donate half of it to charities specifically for housing? Around here is where the calm, collected, and fine conversation ended. My memory from this is still all around the place. The gist of it is him telling me that I was crazy for even thinking he wanted anything to do with the money for selfish reasons. That I should just trust what he says. He said he regrets ever meeting me, that he would make sure all of my friends knew how I really was. He said that we were through, he threw my keys at me, he tried punching a hole in the wall, unsuccessfully. By this time, I'd already texted my dad who came in to see what he was doing. My boyfriend just laughed and told us both he never wants to see us again and that he was out. I know this is extremely rushed, but it all just happened so fast and was incredibly stressful. There was much more said and much more done, but in all honesty, I don't really have the best recollection of everything. I tried to write out all of the important stuff, and if I in a few days have managed to take care of my emotions and calm myself down, I will try to at least comment and add questions if any of you have any for me. The conversation I tried to recite seems very cold and emotionless. In reality, it was more emotions and other words. I tried just writing it out as best as I could. However, I am safe, he can't come in here because he threw his keys at me so he doesn't have them anymore. He is now my ex-boyfriend, and I'll contact him in some time asking about when he would be able to pick up his stuff. I don't know where he's staying, but neither do I really care. In the comments, Accomplished Draw says, Super strange behavior on his part. If I were you, I would still change the locks. What if he made a copy? He wasn't contributing to utilities or the rent you were paying, after helping him out of a bad situation, and then demanded some of your income. I'd be concerned about him breaking back in. None of his behavior makes sense unless he is nuts or using you. You sure he didn't make a copy of that key? Get the locks redone. This dude sounds mean. Security cams are probably a good idea. Tip, for outside doors, one fake camera that's easily seen, one real one that isn't. Let him think he's slick by busting the fake. Maybe get a dog while you're at it. That he never offered to pay rent or utilities when he thought she was paying them was already a red flag. Sounds like he was just one of those guys trying to weaponize buzzwords to get what he wanted. Yeah, I don't know why people were surprised his argument didn't make sense. He didn't actually have an argument. He knew she had money. He knew he wanted that money. He knew he had to say words to get the money. But he just had no idea of what those words were. He wanted free money and not work for it. His job example proved that. Then for him to find out she got 500 a month from a renter, he thought he was entitled to it while telling OP she is horrible for being a landlord. OP is good to rid of the entitled man-child. And that's where I'm going to end today's episode, guys. I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, let me know what you thought of it in the comments down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Does everything to everyone always make sense? No. Did this make sense? Absolutely not. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, it does not make sense. If Chewbacca lives on Endor, you must acquit. I rest my case.